video training module on how to charge your clients. This is a video that's going to be more, most useful for those who are either new to consulting um, or they're starting their own consulting business for the first time. What we're going to do is review uh, four different models for how you can charge your clients um, for your time. And it's going to be pretty quick and to the point, but it should be really useful for those who are trying to get familiar and make sure they have kind of all the conceptual knowledge about how the consulting industry really works. So the first type of way is you can charge your clients based on a project basis. Um, the project basis client charging process works where you define a project that needs to be completed. You've completed projects like that in the past. You have a pretty good idea of how many hours it'll take, how much money it will take. And then you come up with a rate that's agreed upon between you and the client. Say for $20,000, you're going to complete a four-month project for the client. It's going to take you 50 hours, and it's going to require these resources, these travel expenses, etc., and you're going to guarantee the project will be done by then as long as the scope of the project doesn't change. Now what happens is oftentimes the scope does change. Obstacles come in the way, new challenges, budget challenges, um, other priorities from the corporation take over and you don't get the resources you needed to get the project done on time. And the tricky part about project work is oftentimes, unless it's written into the contract, you are stuck in doing the project for that price. If the time goes over, unless it's stated in the contract explicitly that the scope has changed for reasons A, B, C, then you're stuck doing the project and you have to absorb those extra costs. And that's definitely a bad thing. Clients like this though, because it lets them control costs. If they have 50,000 in their budget, that's extra. They could spend 20,000 on this project, still have some extra money. So that's really good for them because they know they can control their costs. If you're charging hourly, you could give them an estimate, but if you're not stuck on a full project fee, you have no huge incentive to work efficiently because the more hours, the more money you make. So why work quick? Let's take our time and do everything very slow and methodically. So that gets us to the next way of charging a client, which is just hourly. You could say, you know, we're going to get this project done, and we're going to do it right, and our hourly rate is $200 an hour. Um, you know, let us know. You know, we can come up with an estimate of how long it's going to take, but we do charge on an hourly basis, and we'll turn in our hours at the end of each month. Um, this way is good for the consultant sometimes when the project can't be estimated very accurately. It can be good when the client doesn't have a defined scope. They're using you in very diverse ways, many different ways, and maybe they have a history of the scope constantly changing um, or the project constantly changing. It might be good to charge hourly. It could also be combined with project work. You could charge project work, but then say it's hourly for anything that's not in this very well-defined scope. Another way of charging a client is on a retainer basis. And a retainer basis is saying that, well, the definition of a retainer is a monthly consulting payment paid based on an expectation of a certain level of work. So for example, I've worked for clients on retainers of say $5,000 a month and they expect you to do these certain activities per month and work this many hours per month. Um, if you work any more hours than the retainer, then you'd want to write in the contract that any hours above and beyond this agreed amount of 20 hours a month uh, would have to be extra and you'd have to charge them uh, your hourly rate beyond then typically. Um, it might be a discounted rate from your normally flat rate of say it's $200 an hour. Maybe you only charge them $100 an hour for anything over your retainer to reward them for doing this retainer agreement. And this can be good for the client because they can budget. They know what their expenses will be each month and they know what the deliverables will be each month. This is good for very long-term, ongoing projects. It's also great for the consultant because they can plan their budget within their own consulting business. They can plan their income a little bit better and they can give a lot of value to that client because if you have five consulting clients, one is a project basis, you're trying to work very efficiently, you don't want to spend too much extra time on it. One is hourly, they're a little bit annoying to work with because they're constantly changing things, it makes it very hard to please them. And the other client is a retainer client and you get $5,000 a month working for them, you understand what's expected, you do a great job every month. Where are you going to spend your extra time? I mean, I would spend more time on the retainer client, keep them very happy. Maybe they'll even eventually increase that retainer and have you do more work for them. But that repeat retainer client is very appealing to consultants. So it's a great model to go for. If you're starting a business, going for a retainer is a great way to go. There'll be some months where you work very hard and you earn every cent of that retainer. Probably other months where the return retainer is easier to earn and the work is easier. So it really, it evens out overall, but a retainer agreement is a great way to go. The last method is incentive-based compensation. This can be relatively interesting um, for doing marketing consulting or 
project management consulting, if you get something done on time, if sales increase by so many percent within three years, if you're leaving, etc., if you meet that benchmark, then on top of all these other rates options that we've discussed, you get a bonus of $100,000 or $50,000. That can be a great thing to put in place, especially for a client that's concerned about costs and doesn't want to pay your full rates. You could say, hey, look, why don't we do a $3,000 a month retainer, but if this happens by this date, measured by this, then we get a $100,000 bonus, which will bring us not only back to our normal rates, but a little bit above, but we don't get paid unless we've delivered the goods. That's a great way to assure a client who's budget sensitive that they're going to get a ton of value from you. It assures that you're going to work very hard and it can be a way to get paid more than your competitors. So it can be a really creative way of going about business. Some people won't agree to it. Sometimes won't get approved at large corporations, but it's a great thing to at least consider. Um, so I hope you this video on how to charge clients is really useful for you. Uh, the first way we covered was project based and then hourly based and then retainer based and then incentive based. And remember, all of these can be combined. Um, some of the sophisticated consulting firms will have retainers based on, and then they'll have hourly for overages on hours on the retainers, and they'll also have incentives in place. And that can be a very intelligent way to go about charging your clients. Newer consulting firms typically only charge clients one way, but I often have found it's more profitable to charge clients two or three different ways. And it can make it more fair for you and the client. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's businesstraining.com where you can earn master's level qualifications to help you make more money.